Well, howdy friends, Brian Flessig of Mad River Outfitters in the Midwest Fly Fishing Schools, and welcome back to another one of our fly fishing Q&A videos. As always friends, we appreciate you being here. Be sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss an episode and hit that like button, that just makes us feel good. Um, as always, we appreciate the questions. It's really absolutely amazing the number of questions that we get from all over the world. Uh, we do our best to answer all of them uh, as much as possible. And uh, remember to send them over to admin at Mad River Outfitters. And uh, if we feel you need immediate assistance, we'll get right back to you there via email. And of course, if you do make it to one of these videos, we will send you a free hat and fly box. Uh, so again, send them over to admin at Mad River Outfitters. If you need, if it's an emergency, pick up the phone and call us. Of course, uh, customer service is what we do. And uh, just in case that is young Bella, you may hear, uh, she desperately wants to be in a video. So um, we'll see what we can do about that. So anyway, for, let's get started here. Uh, our good friend Luke Kirby from Pocatello, Idaho. Luke, uh, you got to remember, send us your address or we don't know where to send the free hat and the fly box. So Luke Kirby from Pocatello, Idaho, if you're out there, uh, send us your address and we'll get that out to you. So uh, Luke says, Brian, first of all, thank you for your videos and your sense of humor. Well, Luke, uh, thank you. We appreciate that. And, uh, you know, we like to have fun. That's what fly fishing is all about. We don't take it too seriously, so uh, appreciate that. I thoroughly enjoy watching reviews and videos on your channel. As an avid student of everything fly fishing, I have come across quite the controversy. Well, matching the hatch. Some argue that matching the hatch isn't nearly as important as good presentation, while others argue that matching the hatch is essential in catching fish. What are your thoughts? I'd be curious to know whether I need to focus on the etymology of my local streams and rivers or practice casting in my yard more often. Thank you, Luke Kirby. Well, Luke, um, interesting and somewhat age-old question here, and let me see if I can explain this. Um, matching the hatch. First of all, you're referring to, for the most part, trout fishing. Uh, for those that don't understand, uh, a hatch is when um, an aquatic insect, such as a mayfly, caddisfly, stonefly, or a midge, is, is going to emerge from its nymphal or larval state to become the adult aquatic insect, and that adult is gonna be potentially riding on the surface of the water, and thus creating dry fly fishing. And yes, during a hatch, Luke, and the fish are focused in on eating those particular dry flies. Yes, it is fairly important that you have a fly that resembles the natural insect. So when you're trout fishing and when there's a hatch going on and the fish are keyed in on that dry fly, then yes. And there is some criteria there when you're matching the hatch. Really, the first thing you want to match is the size of the bug. The second thing you want to make sure is the shape of the bug, whether the wings are upright or laid flat over the body. And then last but not least is the color of the bug. Uh, some people may argue that, but that's kind of old uh, wisdom. Size, shape, and color um, is very important. Uh, but a couple of things. Presentation, you act, you ask, excuse me, it, it's near, not nearly as important as a good presentation. Well, we've always said here, if it acts like food, if it looks like food and acts like food, the fish will probably eat it. So you can't just take that perfect bug that looks exactly like the natural insect that's hatching. You can't just throw it out there and, and and expect all of a sudden the fish to just eat it. It has to act like food, okay? So <clears throat> you have to make that fly utilizing the cast and then utilizing a proper leader 
and then utilizing things like men's and line control to make that fly act like food. I don't care how good a representation the fly is, if it doesn't act like the natural, you're not going to catch the fish. So I would say that really um, they're both of equal importance. But the truth of the matter is uh, that a lot of us, myself included, um, don't just trout fish. I mean, when it comes to smallmouth fishing, largemouth fishing, uh, carp fishing to a certain extent, and then of course saltwater, musky fishing, all the different things we do, matching the hatch is really not that much in our vocabulary. Uh, if you're streamer fishing, you might try to match the particular bait fish that the fish is eating. You could call that matching the hatch. But And then the other thing to think about is that really how often in your entire time on the water for the rest of your life are you actually going to encounter a hatch where the fish are feeding specifically on that dry fly. For most people out there, it's going to be a relatively small portion of, of their angling career. Um, unless you live on the banks of a trout stream and you're able to uh, fish only when a hatch is going on, sure, it's going to be important. Uh, but I would say for overall, it's overrated. I would say that you don't have to worry too much about it. Of course, if you know there's going to be a hatch going on, try to have some of those flies. And then you still need to practice your casting. So the question was, I, do I need to focus on the entomology of my local streams and rivers or practice casting in my yard more often? I would say you've got to do both. You've got to learn your entomology, learn the bugs and the hatches that are in your stream. But if you can't make the right cast and the right presentation, you're not going to catch the fish anyway. So I hope that makes some sense, Luke. Um, and again, send us your address and we'll get you out of Mad River Outfitters hat and fly box. And appreciate you being here. Um, next up, we've got Mike Paluski from Lansdale, Pennsylvania. Um, and Mike chimes in with a question that we get a lot. We've been getting a lot and we're going to, you're going to hear more about this in coming episodes, but I wanted to go ahead and answer your question, uh, because, uh, so many folks have been chiming in with this. So, Hey guys, love the, the YouTube channel information question for you. Fly lines come in all different types of colors. What is the best color to have? Or is there a best color to have? I'm primarily fishing nymphs for trout. The line color I have right now is light blue. I didn't pick my fly line color. I got it when I ordered a rod and reel combo to get back into fly fishing with my son. He has light yellow and a brown color. Thanks and keep up the great work on the YouTube channel. Love it, Mike Paluski. Well, Mike, um, great question. And um, I fish with, whenever possible, I fish with a bright orange fly line. Um, this is my instructor rod. In fact, a lot of folks ask a lot about this rod. It's the yellow rod that I use um, in our fly casting series. And anytime I'm demonstrating casting, you see me using this rod. We get a lot of questions on this, and this rod was actually given to me many years ago by Lefty Cray himself. It is the Lefty Cray Instructor Rod by TFO. It is truly one of my most prized possessions. Um, and it's yellow so that you can see it on camera. Um, it's not a great fishing rod. A lot of people chime in uh, as to what rod am I using, uh, thinking that they might want to go out and buy one. It's a great rod for teaching folks. It's not really a rod that I would use for fishing, not to mention, again, one of my most prized possessions, and uh, I don't take it fishing usually. Uh, but in many of my videos, you see that I'm using a bright orange fly line. And not only when I'm teaching, if you see me out on the water, chances are I'm fishing a bright orange fly line. And this is something that uh, uh, I especially learned from our good friend Flip Pallet many, many years ago. And Flip absolutely swears by, insists on a bright orange fly line. 
So the line that I use most often, I do a lot of warm water and a lot of salt water fishing, and I use the high vis flip line. This is from uh, Cortland Line Company, and this line is as bright orange as it gets on the head, and then it is white on the running line. It doesn't get any more bright orange than this line. And it, I'm to the point where I can't fish without it. Um, I absolutely have to have a bright orange fly line, especially when I'm fishing in salt water. In fresh water, I'll occasionally use some, some different lines, but um, the bright orange fly line as Flip taught us and Flip insists, and it's not only Flip. There's a lot of, in fact, I think we've got a little clip here for you uh, uh, we were fishing with Blaine Chocolate down in Virginia a few weeks ago, and uh, here's what Blaine had to say about it. So Blaine, I noticed that uh, you've got a lot of orange fly lines on the boat. Uh, what's your opinion on fly line color? Does it matter? Does it matter to the fish? I don't think it matters at all. I think uh, there's a couple reasons I feel that way. I feel like if you make a bad cast, or a bad presentation and you line a fish it doesn't matter what color it is at all but the other thing is i don't think anything including ourselves if you if so think about this next time you're in a pool swimming go on the bottom of a pool and look up and have a, have an object just put a stick up there it could be an orange stick or black or purple or whatever you want and look at it backlit against the sun until you get really close, you're not going to be able to tell if it's gray, black, orange, pink, or white. The closer you get is when you're able to tell what color it is. And if your line lands close to a fish, generally you're going to spook them. Yeah. So it doesn't matter what color it is. Until a fish gets close enough, it's all gray to them. You know, it's going it, to, of course, as they get closer, they're going to be able to tell what color what and taste, smell, and all that kind of stuff. But not until they get close. So for me... It's all about the angler being able to track their line and what they're not only casting, but fishing too. Being able to see where your fly is, help see if you're getting drag or not, if you, can, if you need to make a mend. All this stuff helps you become a better angler. And definitely being able to cast with a sighted line, tracking it in your peripheral makes a huge difference. It does, uh, you know, that was taught to me by, by Flip and you've heard Flip preach, literally preach about it. I mean, he is staunch when it comes to it's got to be a bright orange fly line for him and he's right and I can't fish without him and you're right not only in the casting but when you're fishing when you're on a bonefish flat uh, being able to see that line very clearly it tells me how much slack I have so I can tighten up just perfectly so that I'm right there and ready to go I've had countless customers guides that uh, have all become believers in the bright orange or high vis fly lines I just don't get it why saltwater lines are designed to blend into the environment. It absolutely doesn't work. I can't fish with them, and I wish manufacturers would stop doing that. I agree. Yeah, I'm, I'm right there with you. So, anyways, bright orange fly line. Now, I'm not saying it's the best color to have. I don't think there is a best color, um, but it's what I prefer. It's what a lot of professionals prefer. And being able to see your fly line makes a world of difference. I would, to be honest with you, I would never buy a fly line that's light blue or sand color or especially olive. Um, uh, absolutely horrible. Um, and I couldn't fish with, them, with that. Um, so there's a couple of other fly lines out there for freshwater or cold water anglers, Rio has just come out with their Premier Gold series, and it is a bright orange, um, and it's, it's a great line. In fact, the whole line is bright orange. And then one of my favorite and often overlooked fly lines of all time is the Lee Wolf Triangle Taper, and this stuff is so good. So anyway, the Lee Wolf Triangle Taper fly line is, I think, one of the most overlooked and underrated fly lines of all time. Uh, for a lot of my, uh, especially trout fishing, especially dry fly fishing, the Triangle Taper, uh, and of course the bright orange. And as you, uh, I think, just heard Blaine Chocolate say, I say it all the time, Flip says it all the time, 
The, the color of your fly line does not spook fish. Bad casting spooks fish. And the benefits of having that bright orange line, I can see it in my peripheral vision. I can see it on the water better. I have an, a better idea if there's any slack in the system and when you're mending. I can't say enough about it. The, uh, if not bright orange, at least a bright color that you can see. Um, it's not going to spook the fish, friends. It's just not going to do it. So uh, there you go, Mike. Get yourself a bright colored fly line, preferably bright orange. Give us a call here at the shop if you need help selecting something from our stock here. Uh, we'll be happy to do that. But get rid of that light blue fly line. That doesn't do anybody any good. So uh, thank you, and Mike will get you out that hat and the fly box. And last but not least, we have Michael Bunkers from Burnsville, Minnesota. And Michael says, love the channel and the insight. Well, thank you, Michael. We appreciate that. Um, I used to fish, I used to bass fish a few local tournament circuits and even made a little money doing so. Fly fishing has taken over and I'm absolutely overwhelmed by the level of information, physics, entomology, gear, etc. But that is also how I work mentally. The Driftless region is two hours away, as is Lake Superior with all of its tributaries and Lake Minnetonka, Millilax, and other giant musky fisheries. Awesome place to live. What advice can you give a new recruit, like me, that tends to constantly overthink the science? Bass, trout, musky, crappie, walleye, all readily available, most within walking distance of my back door. I do not fish from a boat most times, just my waders in all scenarios. Thanks and keep up the great work, Michael. So Michael, your question is, what advice can I give you, a new recruit, that, who tends to constantly overthink the science? And I would say, stop overthinking it. Um, to be honest with you, uh, a really simple answer, but it's really true. We get tons and tons of emails and phone calls here at the shop from folks just like you, Michael, that are, quite frankly, overthinking it. Um, and I know it's easy to do. It's an easy trap to fall into, but don't do it. Um, this is not as complicated as you think. Um, sure, there's some cool things to dive into, the physics and the entomology, and I know we do that here on this channel quite a bit. Um, but don't get caught up in it, don't let it overwhelm you, and don't let it ruin your day out on the water. Um, remember that fly fishing has to be fun. That is what we're here for, is to have fun. We're not, and, and don't take yourself too seriously. We're not saving babies. We're not curing cancer. This is not politics. This is not religion. In fact, what, what I do for a living really has no benefit to the planet at all. Um, it's a ve very self-serving thing. We're not really helping others. You know, we're just going fishing. And in a lot of cases, we're doing harm to innocent little fishes. Um, so... We won't go down that rabbit hole, but I would say stop overthinking it, as, um, and that's a message to a lot of folks. Uh, tie a leader on the end of your fly line. Of course, make sure it's a bright orange fly line. Uh, tie on a good fly. Take it out there and make that fly act like food. Sure, you got to practice your casting, but that's really it. Have a proper leader, throw a fly out there that looks like food, make it act like food, and have fun, and stop thinking so much about it, okay? Um, <clears throat> and then the last thing I'll say is that there's a great quote from uh, Isaac Walton, I believe it was, and Isaac Walton said that many anglers go through life never realizing that it's the f not the fish that they're after. And I always thought that was a great quote. Um, so it's not just about catching fish. It's about the solitude. It's about the uh, being one with nature. It's about the adventure. It's about the process. Not necessarily about just catching fish. So I would say uh, have more fun, enjoy yourself, and stop thinking so much about it. Tie on a leader, tie on a fly, 
make it act like food. So there you go, Michael. We'll get you out a hat and a fly box. I hope that makes sense and hope it helps. And uh, as always, friends, we appreciate you being here. Be sure to subscribe. Stay tuned. We've got a lot more coming at you. And uh, we'll see you soon. If you like this video, hit subscribe. It helps out a lot. And check out these videos. We think you might like them too.